Now then, how are you doing? I want to talk about contours and to show you how a flat two-dimensional image can be given the illusion of depth quite simply. I was out walking recently and was just completely blown away by how much visual interest folds and undulations and the ground added to the scene. I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to begin by creating a simple landscape. It's going to be loosely based upon a track encountered on a recent walk in Swaledale in the Yorkshire Dales. I need a sky so I'm starting out with a loose wet in wet wash consisting of Prussian blue and French ultramarine. Applying a wet in wet wash is all about timing. The paper needs to be damp, not sopping wet. Don't apply your paint too early or you'll have no control over it at all. I'm working with my board set at a slight angle of 20 to 30 degrees. That way, if nothing else, I at least know which way the paint's going to flow. Adding cadmium yellow to the Prussian blue gives me a pleasant medium strength green which I'll use to paint the grassy hillocks either side of the track. A light burnt umber completes my initial rendering. What I want to draw your attention to of course is how flat and two dimensional everything looks. The basic shapes of the hills are there and the track helps to draw the eye into the composition but there are no visual treats along the way, nothing for the eye to linger over. There's absolutely no substance to the hills at all, that's why they look flat and frankly uninteresting. The way to make it all look a little more visually interesting is to add some contours. For this I've added a touch of burnt umber to my green to subtly change its colour and its intensity. Adding contours requires a bit of care. Laying them down willy-nilly will not only look messy but they won't make any sense. Wrongly placed or thoughtlessly shaped contours may send out the wrong message altogether. Contours visually explain the three-dimensional shape of objects on a two-dimensional surface. For them to make sense, they should curve in the right direction and not be too repetitive. I'm applying brush strokes, then softening them off and blending them into the surrounding wash with a damp brush. Although I'm using a source photograph as a starting point, I should confess that I'm largely making the contours up as I go along. This can be a gamble, so a piece of tissue to lift them out, should they not look right, is a useful thing to have close by. The main thing is to monitor things as they develop, and always allow yourself the time and space to stand back and to try and see it with a fresh eye. Having modelled the basic shape of my contours, it's time to add a second, darker tone to enhance and exaggerate the folds, dips, cracks and undulations in the ground. Again, I'm applying brush marks, then immediately softening them off with a damp brush. Note damp brush, not wet brush. If your brush is too wet, then the excess water will almost certainly play havoc with the proceedings, pushing the pigment back upon itself and creating unwanted blemishes and backruns. 
I'm constantly monitoring things, taking hints from random occurrences and trying to turn them into something positive and hopefully realistic. I'm leaving a few random highlights as I go along in the hope that they'll look like scattered stones. Again, one of the most important aspects of this procedure is to maintain a loose, natural appearance and try to avoid creating repetitive, unnatural patterns. Finally, let's not forget that contours come in all shapes and sizes. Without any surface details, the track looks smooth and uninteresting. Adding small contours breaks the surface up and gives it a more realistic appearance. Marks can represent different things according to their size. Cracks and stones, potholes and tire tracks. Ultimately, realism is one of the things most of us strive for and contours are one of the first steps towards achieving that aim. Well, I hope that's given you some ideas of your own and encourages you to experiment with contours. I'll see you next time.